Hello everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes. And tonight we should be getting the reveal of the next set of special heroes to drop into the game just past the weekend. So it's going to be a summer banner, we know that, the first of two summer banners. And you can see we have the silhouettes off to the left hand side for guessing purposes. Now, the prevailing theory, of course, for the right silhouette is Caspar from Three Houses. That is a pretty natural fit with that hairstyle. It does look like it would be pre-time skip Caspar if that were the case. And then the other common theory for the other silhouette is Ash. I'm a little less confident about Ash, but I could definitely see that as well. It does seem as though this is going to be a Three Houses based banner, at least partially, if not entirely. We'll have to see if they throw another title into the mix. Uh, of course, there's also kind of been soft confirmed that we would get a Marianne summer unit, I believe, based upon what we know from the data mine. The original Marianne is featured as a bonus unit for the Tempest Trial, which usually means that the... Um, it usually means, if the original unit is a bonus unit, that usually means that it's because the alternate unit is the bonus unit as well. So, a lot of speculation about Marianne potentially being in there. I've heard theories about Claude. I definitely wouldn't be surprised about seeing Claude on the banner, but I think I would be pretty surprised about seeing three male characters on a summer banner, although I guess one of them could be the free unit. Uh, the Tempest Trial unit. Uh, as far as Three Houses units that I'd really like to see on a Summer Banner, Manuela would be great. I think she was teased a little bit in some of the earlier dialogue released with some other characters. And Petra, of course. Petra, one of my favorites. So either of those would be amazing. Not holding my breath about it, though. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the trailer. Watch it blind for the first time. All right, let's go. Here it is. Fire Emblem Heroes making a big summer splash special heroes to battle oh hey it is ash fabled sea knight all right and by the music it does seem like this is going to be a full three houses themed uh banner i like the oh it's going to be a unique spear it's not inheritable the spear with the fish on it looks like he's got a trace skill okay so he is going to be separate from, uh, let's see, did they, oh, Unfussed Basker, oh my goodness me, Mercedes looks phenomenal, that's awesome, that swimsuit design is so good, Peachy Parfait, Iceberg, Attack Res Push 4, okay, Far Trace, oh, oh man, bring in the dessert. Bringing the sweetness. Love it. Love it to death. Okay. More Kanto. Always a joy. And there is, of course, that cast bar. Summer Intensity. Very appropriately named. <laughs> uh, definitely full of energy. Uh, Victor Fish Plus. <laughs> Slapping people around with a big fish. Uh, not bad. Gonna be an infantry axe unit. And then finally, oh my goodness, Deer's two-piece. It is going to be Hilda and Marianne. Wow, that art is beautiful. Okay, so Sunshade Staff, Nudge Plus. Uh, Nudge Plus? Wait, oh, they're a healer. They're a flying healer. A flying duo healer at that. Goodness me. Okay, Nudge Plus. So it's going to be um, Shove Plus, uh, plus Heal. Okay, and they're going to have a duo skill, of course. Looks like I see isolation built in there. Uh, we're, of course, going to take a closer look at that uh, on a second viewing of the trailer where we slow things down. But let's enjoy the duo skill animation. Oh, man. Marianne has the, the umbrella, too. Nice. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's a really cool attacking effect. Nice! Alright, Paralogue Story Summer Vibrance. That's that's a pretty fun and fan-filled selection here. Let's pause. That looks like Leone in the corner, if I'm not mistaken. So if that is going to be Leone, I am very excited. I actually really like Leone, so that would be great. It looks like she is going to be an archer, uh, cavalry archer. Um, yeah, they, they've, they really kind of brought it, I think. Uh, honestly, a lot of fan favorites here. So starting on the 21st of June, all the way until the 4th of August. 
So we actually have way more than an entire month to pull for these units, which is surprising. Um, that's interesting. Uh, and then we've got four four units, uh, even color distribution across the banner. Caspar is going to be the four-star focus unit of the banner, which is great for people that want to build him as a merge project. And everybody knew that Caspar was coming. Ash, I guess, was a pretty logical choice for the, or logical guess for the other silhouette. Uh, was not expecting Mercedes. She looks fantastic. Uh, Marianne and Hilda as a duo unit. I think a lot of people were guessing that to be the case. I think there were there may have been some dialogue hints that Hilda uh, would have a summer v variant um, in the game, and and they look phenomenal as well. I'm. It's a pretty relatively rare archetype of being a flying uh, healer and a flying duo healer. So I'm. I'm interested to see what utility they end up bringing. So let's rewind, take a closer look at the characters and their skills um, to see if this is a banner that I think is worth pulling on. Um, I mean, spoiler alert, I'm going to be pulling on this for, for sure, just just for the characters and the art alone. But uh, but <laughs> let's, let's take a closer look. All right, so here is Ash, and he is, of course, going to be... This is the first version of Ash dropping into the game. So not too dissimilar from Sylvain, who I believe also debuted first on a summer banner. Um, but yeah, I mean, here's his art. Uh, it looks clean. Looks uh, he's got that starry eyed, eyed look. I do like the color palette of the like the deep the variations of the blues, just to represent kind of the oceanic theme. He has that lance at his side. I like the lance where he's he's caught a number of really beautiful looking fish uh, on the end of it looks like he's a pretty skilled fisherman uh with the spear alone doesn't even need the fishing rod i like the sky blue hoodie really suits him kind of brings out the green of his eyes the purple sash and then the little kind of design at the bottom of his trunks he's got a little basket around his hip too just to, i guess for when he uh, has too many fish on his spear that he needs to kind of um, move over into storage and he's wearing kind of like the signature beach footwear for for Fire Emblem men for for whatever reason, kind of like the the shin sandals. But yeah, the art looks pretty great. Nice gentle shading. Really nice. All right. So divine sea spear. It's going to be sixteen might. Grants attack plus three. If unit initiates combat or foe's HP is greater than or equal to seventy five percent of the start of combat, grants attack speed defense plus three to unit during combat, and inflicts minus three to those stats on foe during combat and also if foe has attack speed defense bonuses grants bonus to units attack speed defense and inflicts penalty on foe's attack speed defense during combat equal to the current bonus on each of foe's attack speed and defense calculates each stat bonus independently okay all right that that's okay that's pretty respectable i mean just to reiterate uh it is going to be a non-inheritable weapon it is exclusive to him uh, attack plus three to start, that's always good. The condition being, the foe's HP has to be equal to or above 25%, or he's player phasing. So as long as he's player phasing, he's always going to get this, this effect. Um, otherwise, if the opponent has above or equal to 75% HP. I'm not the biggest, biggest fan uh, of the enemy HP condition for, for weapons, but, you know, being above or equal to 75% HP, generally speaking, is, is pretty, pretty generous. Uh, as far as the window. And then not only that, you know, if they have more HP, that's where the stat boosts and buffs are going to come in handy. So um, gets plus three to his stats and minus three to the enemy's stats, which effectively means he gets a plus six differential on those stats, being attack speed and defense. That's super solid. Um, and then any bonuses on the enemy, the enemy gets debuffed, so it neutralizes their buff. So their activated buffs, the cyan numbers, and then those buffs get up, end up getting attributed to him, which is actually on top of whatever activated buffs he has. So it's kind of a, a so it's kind of a displaced blade tone type effect, similar to Ashira that we, that we saw relatively recently. So I would expect this to be kind of the theme for all of the um, for all of the weapons because that's what they usually tend to do on a seasonal banner. Um, so that's that's pretty solid. Uh, Moonbow and then uh, Blue Dual Cavalry Four. Not going to really go into that, but I mean. The four tier four skills for uh, dual skills are significantly better than the than the dual three skills. Speed defense near trace three for the B slot enables Kanto remainder plus one. Inflicts speed defense minus three on foe during combat and Kanto plus one. So that essentially means that whatever movement he did not use when engaging or acting that turn, uh, he gets back that he can use for a Kanto and then plus one additional move. Uh, or one additional space, I should say. 
And then joint hone speed for the C slot. And start a turn if unit is adjacent to an ally, grant speed plus five to unit and adjacent allies for one turn. Um, overall, Ash's kit is is not bad. I mean, it's kind of a way to just kind of shoehorn the, the B-Duel Cavalry 4 uh, and another trace skill. I, his weapon seems solid, but it's not it's not amazing, I would say. I mean, it's certainly potent, don't get me wrong. I just, I do think that uh, a little bit too much of the weapon relies on the enemy, uh, which I, I'm never a huge fan of because you don't have as much control there. So like the HP condition for one thing, and then the fact that really to bring out the full strength of this weapon, the enemy has to have activated buffs on them. So again, um, you can argue that those are the times when you need the buffs the most, when the enemy has buffs on them, and when they have more than 75% HP. But th all the same, I, I, I don't think that the, the effects that you get um, are like that amazing. But still, I'm you know, he's solid, for sure. Take a look at his attacking art here. Oh, actually, this is his special art. So I'm reeling you in. Actually, you get a better look at the seashell necklace that he has, too. I didn't notice that in the first, uh, in his neutral art. But yeah, he's just kind of leaping forward. I love the water effect around him. I love the brilliant array of different fish that are there, too. It's a really great theme. And so it, it, it gives a lot of liveliness to the art, which I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of. So I think it looks great. Definitely looks great. Showing off the Kanto, as usual. All right, so here is Mercedes, unfussed basker. Love her gentle smile. Love the color selection with the champagne of the dress mixed with the black. It gives kind of this really elegant look to her overall. She has um, the black bow in her hair with the side ponytail signature to her, of course. She obviously has a very gentle expression and demeanor, as is a very standard for Mercedes. Uh, looks like she's got a, a smoothie or some kind of a, a, a nice little... Um, cool treat in her hand. She has a wide-brimmed straw hat to keep those sun's rays uh, off of her glowing skin here. I mean, she looks fantastic. And Kipu doing the art. Kipu has a tendency to put large heads <laughs> on their characters, um, and they refrain from doing so with Mercedes. I really actually appreciate this. I think this might be one of my favorite Kipu arts in the game, so I think they did a fantastic job with her here. Uh, you can see the fruit around her kind of floating um, the long trail of the champagne skirt with the frills at the bottom, again, just gives a, a, a certain elegance, I think, to the overall look. And the overall design is just a bit daring with some ample curves on display. So Mercedes looks fantastic. Let's see what she's got as far as skills are concerned. All right, so Peachy Parfait, this is going to be an inheritable weapon. It's a 12 might red tome. At start of combat, if foe's uh, HP is above or equal to 75%, grants res plus 5 to unit and inflicts res minus 5 on foe during combat, and also if foe has res bonus. Okay, so essentially a res exclusive variant of what we saw with um, with Ash, of course, so that makes a lot of sense here. I think that is going to be the theme of the banner, and honestly, it's not a theme that I love. Again, I think it's way too dependent on the enemy. Um, and this one doesn't even have the player phase portion of Ash's weapon, so it, it's completely hingent upon the enemy's HP as a condition, uh, which means that even if she's player phasing in any form, um, she's not guaranteed to get the effect. So I don't really like that. I'm actually not in love with this weapon. Um, I think it can be powerful in the right scenario, but you, you don't really have a lot of control over the scenario. Um, Iceberg for the special. Attack res push 4 is very good for an A slot. Uh, and attack res uh, far trace 3. So that is going to be inflicting attack res minus 3 on foe during combat. And then Kanto remainder. Since she's a ranged unit, she gets the far trace skills. Which means that, of course, she doesn't get the plus 1 to the Kanto. She only gets whatever is left over from her movement up to the point where she took an action. She gets that as a Kanto after the action. So honestly, overall with Mercedes, a little, little underwhelmed. I, the push skill and the trace skill are both excellent. Just, I mean, but those aren't like really special for her specifically. Um, I don't know what her stat line is necessarily going to be, but it's probably going to be heavier on the res since it does seem like the skills themselves cater themselves to her having, uh, or to boosting her res and she has Iceberg as her special. But again, not hugely in love with the weapon. So uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not... I'm not hugely in love with her kit, but I am in love with her art. I think her art is gorgeous here. Tuckered out already, you get the peaches and the pineapples flying around her as she's got this, again, this sunny smile, sunny disposition, so gentle and free. 
She's launching herself forward. You get actually a little bit of a better view of the frills uh, that line the, the top that she has with the little bow at the front. And even the bow on the side of her of her uh, sheer skirt has some, some nice little uh, intricate designs on the end of it where it's connected. So you also get a better view of the bow in her, in her hat there, which again matches like the deeper, darker chocolate sort of color of uh, the rest of her swimsuit. So fantastic job on the art um, and the animation. I love the parfait animation. I think it's great. But as far as her skills are concerned, she's got great, she's got some good, got some good stuff. The A slot and the B slot, just not, I don't know, her weapon's just okay. Uh, summer Intensity, so, and here is Caspar just brimming with confidence, um, feet shoulder width apart, he's got his, his fists on his hips, and he's got his arm around what looks like a giant fish, um, is that a tuna? I don't know what that is, but that is his weapon, he is using it to slap some people around, um, I like that his, his outfit overall is kind of more minimalistic as far as like the design. He doesn't have a hoodie like Ash did. He's just kind of just more out there. Um, he's got some goggles, I guess, for when he's doing some diving. Um, you have the accents of the teal of, for the, uh, the armband as well as on his trunks that matches his hair and his eyes. He has like the one, uh, kind of like side skirt to his, um, to his shorts, which makes, it just kind of adds a little flavor to what would otherwise be a very traditional kind of, kind of boring outfit. So I think, I, I don't know, it just kind of works for him. And of course the arm wraps or the hand wrap as well. Um, it's very, it's very him. So I think they did a, I think they did a good job in capturing Caspar's spirit here. Definitely looks full of energy. All right. So as a reminder, he is going to be the four star focus unit of the banner. Victor fish plus 14 might. It is going to be inheritable at start of combat if foe's HP is greater than or equal to 75%, grants defense plus 5 to unit, and inflicts defense minus 5 on foe during combat. And also, if the defense bonus is on the enemy, then he gets that added to him, and that penalty gets put on the enemy. Again, same thing with Mercedes, except it is an axe, and it is defense, and it's targeting defense. I really don't love these weapons. I'm just going to say that up front. Um, I, I think that... I think they have their uses. I think they're unique, and I appreciate that aspect of them. I think they can be powerful, and I do appreciate how they're unique, but they're just personally not for me. Uh, Smite for the assist. Bonus doubler three. Okay, so actually that's going to be four-star access to bonus doubler three. That's not bad. Grants bonus to attack speed, defense res during combat equal to current bonus on each of unit stats. Calculates each stat bonus independently. So uh, this essentially gives a blade tone bonus um, to the or to the unit um, for each of their stats, you know that are, that have activated buffs on them. So that's that that's that definitely has a lot of a lot of potential, a lot of use. And then even attack wave three for the C slot. That's that's fine. So I think the most exciting element of this is actually um, having access to bonus doubler three as a four star. I don't think we've had that in yet um, to date. Somebody will I'm sure will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, um, as people love to do. But I, I do think that. This is our first chance of getting it um, and having it at, at such an um, easy access. So, so yeah. Again, not not hugely in love with the the weapon theme here as far as um, effects, but I am in love with the art and the actual weapons themselves because he's just got a giant tuna and he's just slapping people around with it, which is awesome. Uh, again, this art full of dynamic energy. The expression on his face is perfect. He's just having a good time. He's quite obviously loving what he's doing and fully invested in it, not paying attention to anything else. Um, yeah, I, th I think it, I think there's a lot of really uh, vibrant energy coming off of him here. It's great. And slapping people with a fish. What's not to love? Okay, so Deer's two-piece. This is beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous and intricate. I think they knocked it out of the park here. Both Hilda and Marianne are absolute fan favorites, and they know what they're doing. I mean, they, they pulled out the stops and they delivered here. Both of their swimsuit designs, I think, are absolutely exceptional. I think they look fantastic. Uh, you got Hilda with, it looks like, it looks like they both have umbrellas, actually, but Hilda's is actually closed, whereas uh, Marianne is using hers to shield her from the sun. Marianne swimsuit to me has some dancer vibes going on here, at least for me. Maybe it's just me, but I think it might be the fact that there's this gold lining uh, around the edges of the swimsuit itself and the turquoise. 
um, and how those two colors themselves sort of represent uh, like wealth and opulence. And then how the top uh, kind of uh, joins together at the neck with this little collar there. Um, just again, and with the opening in the chest area, it just feels very dancer-esque. You've got this rope belt askew across her hip. Uh, and then you have the uh, the more conservative elements of the swimsuit with the, the turquoise skirt as well. It's not sheer or anything. It is opaque. So it you know gives her some, some more modesty when compared to Hilda, which again, makes a lot of sense with their personality types, right? Hilda bright and vivacious here she's got the stunner shades on her head she's flashing a wink um certainly more modern fashionable i think uh, rather than a more traditional design with marianne it's more modern and fresh with with hilda and you've got the pinks of course that just you know uh, <laughs> matches her her personality perfectly a little bit more provocative a little bit more strappy but i do like how the top itself has um, the little sleeves on on the side, the upper sleeves too. It just kind of adds a nice element overall. So again, I think this I think this art looks fantastic. I'm excited to see what skills they brought with them here. R.I.P. Everyone's orbs. Okay, sunshade staff. So 14 might. It's not inheritable. Calculates damage from staff like other weapons. Okay, so it has a built-in wrathful effect. Grants attack plus six to allies within two spaces during combat. Okay, uh, in in combat buff of plus six attack, for a uh, plus six attack drive is not bad. Grant special cooldown charge plus one per foe's attack to allies within two spaces during their combat. Interesting. Only highest value applied if unit is not adjacent to an ally. Grant's attack speed plus six to unit during combat. Okay. There's a lot of things going on here, so let's break it down. Uh, Wrathful Effect is great because it's built in. You can see that she has Dazzling for the B slot, so you have the Razzle Dazzle combo out of the gate. Um, attack plus six to allies within two spaces during combat. So the next two things are interesting. She basically grants a Drive, uh, a drive Attack plus six and a Drive uh, Breath. So uh, allies within two spaces of her will get Attack plus six and get a, an extra special charge every time they get hit with a foe's attack. That's, I mean, that's pretty darn good. Um, now, it won't stack necessarily with, with other skills of similar ilk. So you can't have some ridiculous combinations, but both of those things, and it kind of cements them as, um, I guess, a more support-based unit. Um, but, however, they turn that around with the last part. If they're not adjacent to an ally, get attack speed plus six during combat. So they get attack speed solo built into their staff, which is very, very solid. A uh, nudge plus. So we, we saw the preview here. It's essentially going to have a shove element to it um, built into the heel. So we're getting more of these healer assists that have a movement um, assist attached to a heal mechanic, which I think is very, very great. It's something that really does bolster the, the usability and the viability of healing units. Um, attack speed push four is an excellent skill for healers in particular and offensive healers because they are limited in what a slot skills they can use push four skills are a perfect fit and then even recovery three for the c slot a start of even number turns restores 20 hp to allies within two spaces of unit and neutralizes any penalty to those allies the recovery skills are underrated i think right now um only because people aren't using a ton of healers and the recovery skills just kind of came out, but the recovery skills are pretty busted. I mean, they're pretty amazing. They only work every other turn, but the fact that you can just neutralize all penalties on enemies within two space on allies within two spaces and restore 20 HP is amazing. Like that's actually amazing because of so many debilitating debuffs out there. The fact that this doesn't have any condition, it just removes it straight up, which is fantastic. And that of course synergizes with Sunshade Staff because Sunshade Staff also grants those bonuses to allies within two spaces. Of course, those are in-combat buffs, whereas even Recovery 3 is an activated buff, meaning that it's at the beginning of a turn. Um, but overall, I think her kit is solid. It, it does allow her to play multi-roles here, or they're, they're, they're allowed to play multi-roles here as a support unit. They're going to be fantastic. Um, they're going to be relatively, again, it's a relatively rare combination of being a flying uh, healer, especially a duo flying healer. Um, and again, they're, they're going to probably hit pretty darn hard as well um, because of the solo skill built into the staff as well as the push skill so yeah i think they are they're pretty awesome looking um 
pretty darn good. Very useful. A lot of utility built in here. And then here, of course, is the attacking art. I do really like the dynamic here. I like that Hilda is on the offensive with one leg outstretched and the other curled in as she's kind of launching herself forward and swinging um, that closed umbrella. Whereas Marianne is pulled back a little bit. Again, I think it reflects the charm of their dynamic, their personality, contrast. Really nice. And uh, so that's the heal, right? Yeah, that's the heal. So let's take a look at their duo skill. Inflicts attack minus seven on foes within three columns or three rows centered on unit through their next actions and inflicts isolation on them. Okay, once used duo skill cannot be activated again right away at the start of every third turn. Okay, so this is a renewing duo skill. Uh, if duo skill has already been used, you can, uh, can use the duo skill again. Isolation means... Uh, target cannot use or, or be the target of assist skills through its next actions. I see. So this is actually hugely debilitating to an enemy team. Three columns and three rows centered on the unit is a huge area of effect. Like, that's actually enormous. Um, it's act that's the majority of the map. Uh, and you can very easily position her to take the most advantage of this. Attack minus seven, that is very, very, that's super solid, that's fine. But the fact that it inflicts isolation has so much utility for a team to essentially neutralize dancers, the ability to neutralize healers, the ability to neutralize repositioning assists or positioning shenanigans in general. And it's also renewable. So th this duo skill is is pretty awesome. It doesn't, I would say it doesn't necessarily synergize with the rest of her kit and what she tries to do. But I, I, what I will say is that it just it reinforces the fact that she's going to be an awesome support on really any kind of team. So, yeah, that's honestly pretty fantastic. You can see the area of effect here. And look at how huge that is. It's absolutely enormous. And, uh, and yeah, so those units are not going to be able to use any assist or, or get any uh, assist used on them. Unless they get isolation remedied. So I guess... You know, recovery. Oh my god, that, that that attacking animation is so cool. Um, so I was saying, I think the recovery skills counter that, right? So I think you might see more of a prevalence of recovery skills being utilized. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But again, that is going to be Leone. It looks like uh, up in the corner there. I am curious. I'm eager to see what her art is going to be. Um, it looks like she has sunflowers on her bow, which is really cute. So yeah, I guess we'll see. We'll just have to see. So my hot take, the art on the banner is glorious, I think, all around. Uh, I think all the characters look fantastic, especially Mercedes, Hilda, and uh, and Marianne. I think they, in particular, look amazing, um, but they all look great. And so from an art perspective, I mean, it's, you know, if you're fans, you, you really couldn't ask for more, I feel, from, from a lot of these, uh, what, what's portrayed here. As far as the skills are concerned, I think that... Uh, that Hilda and Marianne are going to be the prize of the banner. I think they have the most utility, the most uniqueness. They're going to provide the, mo they have the most potential, I think, of all of the units. Um, so I, I, and they have the duo skill. I mean, they've just got a lot going for them here. And I think that they're probably going to be the most sought after unit of the banner and for good reason. Now, as far as the remaining units, I think that, um, like I said, with Caspar, I think that he's a great source of, of bonus doubler as a four-star. It's going to be relatively easy to merge him up as a four-star focus, so I could definitely see him being a target of folks out there. Um, unfortunately for Mercedes and Ash, I, I don't really love their weapons. Um, and Ash in particular, like, Ash's is better, but Ash's is better because it's not inheritable. And so it's exclusive to him, and even then, I don't think it's, like, that amazing as a non-inheritable weapon. So, I don't know. I'm a little bit middling on, on those two. But irrespective of that, I am absolutely summoning for Mercedes. And I am absolutely summoning for Hilda and for Marianne. Those are going to be my targets on the banner. And I will be summoning for them um, in an upcoming video. But let me know in the comments below how you feel about these units. If you are excited for them. If you're disappointed. If you are looking for somebody else. And if you are excited uh, who your targets are going to be. And what your summon strategy is going to be for the upcoming banner. Summer Vibrance. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you are all staying healthy, safe, secure, and united out there, and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's protect those skies.